welcome everybody to the Friday edition of News Games and More, your daily live news show from IGN. I am Terry Schwartz, and joining me are Ben Watts and Mitchell Saltzman. What's up, guys? Hey, hey. Good afternoon. Uh, we, while we have been uh, waiting here, we have been seeing you guys in the chat. We see you starting some flame wars in there. We're not here to start any fights between PlayStation 5 and Xbox. We're here to celebrate both of them, uh, but we will be checking in on your questions throughout the day. We have a lot of exciting stories to go through in today's show, but first, Mitchell, you have a PlayStation 5. This is very exciting. This is our uh, biggest story of the day. Wait, Terry, who, who told you that? It's supposed to be a secret. <laughs> Come on, man. It's not a secret. <laughs> everyone watching knows now. Show it to everyone. I mean, this is like a big deal. Literally, all we can show you guys is the box right now. There are very strict embargoes about this. Um, but a PlayStation 5, it exists. There is, it's not an empty box, right? Uh, no, it's an empty box, actually. <laughs> We're probably not able to show you anything else other than this box. <laughs> Everyone is freaking out in the comics, uh, or in the comic uh, comments. Yannis is just saying, Mitchell, you have a PS5 in all caps over and over again. Uh, <laughs> uh, Clown Prince, no, I do not come with the PlayStation 5. But uh, Mitchell, you're a little out of I'm focus sorry. because there we go. <laughs> even your camera wants to be looking at the PlayStation 5 right now. Um, but is there anything exciting people should know? I know we have a couple like breakdowns of the box and social posts and everything, but this might be some of these uh, people who are watching's first time. Seeing one in real life, it exists. Uh, well, I can say that there are all kinds of cool pics with the box and Janet's cat that I believe IGN might have tweeted out already. If not, I think Janet's tweeting them out. Uh, if if not, there the pictures exist. I've seen them. Uh, but unfortunately, right now, we can't really show you anything other than the box. We can't show you what's in the box. We can't show you. I definitely can't show you what I have on my screen right over here to my oh. right. Oh, that's oh, cannot do that. I can't show you what's my that. desk. I can't show you what's behind my desk. <laughs> my my Warbuck, can you cut just... to the uh, the other camera, the other view where we can see everything no, that Mitchell was You've already spoiled my yes. secret. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, this honestly, like the fact, I, first of all, I'm very jealous that you have a PlayStation 5. I'm sure everyone else uh, who who is uh, chatting in the comments uh, is jealous as well. Okay, this is not a real life photo or video of, of Mitchell's screen, but this yeah. is something to tease us of the PlayStation 5. Um, anyway, I am very jealous that you and, and some other people at IGN have these already for early access uh, ability to prep loads of content that we'll have in time for the release. Um, but uh, Mitchell, how does it feel to like have it in real life what is your hype level for next gen knowing we're only a couple weeks out right now uh it's it's really high it's i i can't even like it, it's it's the first time that i've really been like in the you know in the trenches of the media during during a next gen console launch so this is all very new to me it's all very exciting um I had to sign a lot of a lot of uh, documents, a lot of non-disclosures, a lot of you know very scary pieces of paper. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm re I'm really excited to uh, to not only play the PS5 right now, but later be able to tell you all about what I'm what I'm checking out. So uh, yeah, it's an exciting time. Keep uh, keep it locked <laughs> to IGN. Ben. You're you're like me where we are uh, PlayStation Five lists uh, like like all the regular folks out in the world. But are you going to get a PlayStation Five? What are you looking forward to about this console? Uh, yeah, absolutely going to get a PlayStation Five. I do have mine pre-ordered. I hope to pick it up. Uh, bar anything going wrong uh, on launch night, uh, I'm very excited. I want to get into that Miles Morales real quick. Yeah, I'm very same. excited, and I'm actually you know curious to dabble with the remastered uh, version. Uh, the actual original Spider-Man game. I don't know how I'm going to feel about the the new face on Spider-Man. I became very attached to my Peter Parker. Yeah. Uh, but that is that is where my hype level is at. I am incredibly jealous. I want to know what that <laughs> feeling was <laughs> when it was delivered and you had it in your hands for the very first time, Mitchell. <laughs> uh, honestly, it was like at seven o'clock in the morning. So it, I was very groggy. I went to bed at two o'clock last night. <laughs> so it's it, it's not like a memory that I'm really gonna look back upon very fondly. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it, it was awesome being able to you know open the box for the first time, take it out, and you know get to get to see it in all its glory. 
I, yeah, I'm exceptionally jealous. At least you have a more fond story than our beloved uh, Beyond host, Jonathan oh, Bush, who we know, a huge PlayStation fan, wakes up this morning and missed FedEx, or FedEx missed him, as he said, so he had to wait even longer to get his special delivery. Um, we'll obviously have plenty more PlayStation 5 uh, coverage for you once we are able to show you more of the system. But in the meantime, there is another big PlayStation 5 story today that I thought would be a good follow-up uh, to not being able to show you guys the system, but being able to show you the box. Uh, a third-party company called PlayStation 5, which is not affiliated with Sony in any way, or PlayStation, or the PlayStation 5 brand, is a company that is making a uh, cover uh, variation faceplates available for pre-order. Um, the pre-orders will be available uh, starting now and to be delivered on or before November 12th. Uh, they're offering a number of different colors that you can get as different face plates uh, for your PS5 digital and disc editions, including cherry red, chromatic, indigo blue, jungle camo, and limited edition V1 matte black. I had not read those out before. I'm glad that I did not stumble over them then. Um, <laughs> Again, this is Plate Station, not PlayStation, not officially affiliated with Sony, but it is one of the first times that people will have an opportunity uh, to personalize the PS5 look. Now, I have a couple comments from uh, IGN fans on IGN.com that I wanted to read with you guys, but I'm curious for those of you watching in the chat, and also, uh, Mitchell, we'll start with you. Are you planning to customize your PS5, or do you like the kind of traditional white white uh, cover faceplate look? You know, it's it's funny because I'm not one to typically customize uh, consoles, controllers. I, I'm fine with, with the default. I feel like there's, the default was chosen as a default for a reason. So usually I'm fine just keeping things as they are. Uh, but one thing that I'm learning, uh, having a, a fully white uh, console on my dusty entertainment center is that the dust collects really really quickly and it 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 looks bad so like they're the same amount of dust is on all my other consoles obviously but because they're they're black and you know it's it's hard to see it so so easily so i think i might actually spring for a a you know matte black faceplate for for the ps5 you're not alone. I'm, I'm looking at the YouTube comments now. And Trap a Lot VW says they want the black PS5 as well. Uh, now, Ben, what about you? Are you are you planning to swap out your your white and black PlayStation Five colors? I mean, it's gonna happen. I mean, w w aside from the Xbox 360, where, we're, as you remember, the front faceplate was definitely customizable, and there was different versions of that. When has there been such a like iPhone covers and everything that we can actually? fully customize what the outside of the console looks like from one side to the other. I, w I've, I mean, to begin with, plate station, plate station. I know you're, you're a genius. pun master, Ben Watts. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> plate station, fuck. Um, yeah, so I, I'm I'm looking at those pre-orders. I don't know if I will jump on one just yet because I, you know, I want to spend some time with my original white once it arrives. I was liking the color of that blue. That camo one, that has me asking questions. Do you want to hide your PlayStation? Where are you having it? Are you keeping it in a treehouse? These are important questions to ask. Uh, I did like that blue though. But when we start to see all these other companies starting to produce, and hopefully, you know, we'll get some official PlayStation products. And who knows when God of War comes out, God of War 2, Ragnarok, maybe. I'm not sure if that's the official title. But when that drops next year, are we going to get a full God of War plate? Is it going to be textured? Are we going to get all ruins on it? That is what I'm really excited for. That is when I probably jump on that customization bandwagon. Yeah, right. there's gonna be some. There's gonna be some cool pre-order bonuses, I think, involving those those faceplates. And and the question too: Will they sell the custom faceplates, or will you have to buy a whole new system? Hopefully, the former. Um, now you're not alone. I'm going to read a couple comments from uh, the IGN comment section. Uh, Randall forty two is with you. They were saying, uh, for forty dollars, I'll wait to, for something that looks awesome in a cyberpunk Spider Man or God of War theme. Uh, yeah. And then Gaming Devil eight hundred also brought up the great point that they're going to wait until uh, wait until the release, just in case these don't potentially fit properly or Sony releases official ones, which you have to imagine that they will do. Uh, he, they say, rest in peace if you put one of these on and it doesn't come off. And lastly, Joey Dillinger, 1991, uh, 1991, like you, Ben, says, why camo? Why do they always do camo? I don't know. I don't think I've <laughs> ever bought camo branded, but clearly there's a market for it. Clearly these people know something we do not know. 
Um, no, no, Dion Williams in the comment section on YouTube says, sad face, I want one so bad. Uh, Mitchell, should we show them? Should we show them the box again? We have it. I feel it like it's like so I see it again. No, it's so it's so heavy. It takes up the whole screen. I tried to pitch for us just watching <laughs> this <laughs> box the entire thing, but Ooh. I don't know. For some reason they said that wasn't as visually appe appealing as the three of our the back. Yeah. Can yeah, can we give it a spin? Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Again, if, nope, if you want mind. a closer look at the box, uh, we have never posted as much <laughs> box content as you will find on IGN and our various social channels today. Uh, please. Oh, Clown Prince asks, how much does the box weigh? Is that? Are we allowed so to say that? Uh, no, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, so that that is the end of our PlayStation Five uh, portion of of the show today. We hope you enjoyed coming along in this exciting adventure with us. Uh, but don't worry, we'll also have some fun Xbox news today. Uh, so, head of Xbox Phil Spencer has raised the idea of releasing what we're calling streaming sticks as a part of Xbox Game Pass. And we were talking. This is like a, an interesting hypothetical uh, that he's discussing. Speaking to a website. Stratechery, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, if not, it's another great pun. Uh, Phil Spencer explained that the streaming sticks could be used to stream games through the X Cloud after being plugged into the TV. He said, quote, I think you're going to see a lower priced hardware as part of our ecosystem when you think about streaming sticks and other and other things that somebody might want to go and plug into their TV and go play via X Cloud. His quote continues, you can imagine us even having something that we just include in that Game Pass subscription that can give you an ability to stream xCloud games to your television and buying the controller. As IGN executive editor of News, Joe Scrubbles pointed out, Phil Spencer has been talking up the idea of moving beyond the kind of traditional Xbox console ecosystem for some time now uh, and repeatedly has supported the idea of a games first approach. Uh, and then for those of you who just aren't familiar, the xCloud and Xbox game streaming are shape taking shape after a long period of testing, finally. Uh, they'll let you play Xbox games across multiple devices. xCloud is now available as part of your Xbox Game Pass Unlimited subscription and should be coming to iOS in 2021 by a browser-based solution. Now, we were talking a little bit before the show about this idea of streaming sticks, and I don't know, I feel like we all had the takeaway that this could be really smart as a potential option uh, for people who might not have a console but might still want to be able to take advantage of, of Game Pass. Ben, what do you think about this story? Uh, I think it's excellent. I love the way that Xbox is positioning itself leading into this next gen where you can play on any device that might be available to you. Obviously, um, I would love to be able to play on my phone. There are iPhone issues with that. <laughs> we've, there's, we've dealt with those stories before. But being able to play on phones, being able to travel and having maybe a stick that I can stream all my Game Pass games to, that is excellent. We, the only thing we need to get past now is hotel Wi-Fi. Once that's accomplished, <laughs> once that's accomplished, we can do anything we want with our games. Or, that's what or if you think about it, like how many hotels have a Fire Stick option or a Chromecast or something, maybe more hotels. I don't know why we're on the hotel market right now because it's not like we can go to hotels anyway, but like maybe sure. hotels will start having this Xbox uh, streaming stick that we can play games from them. That would be smart. That's a freebie. That's a freebie right Yeah, now. I'm optimistic about the future, the whole hotel gaming future. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mitchell, what do you think about the story uh, or our new hotel segue? I mean, first of all, let me say, when I was a kid and I used to go to, you know, on, on trips play to, to places, they used to have uh, like little consoles that would have like uh super yeah. nintendo games that you could rent and play while you're and i i i would stay in the hotel room and play like kirby's dream course all the time so yes bring this back this is awesome um yeah i think in general this is a, a really smart strategy um i have a ton of friends and family who you know are interested in games but they are kind of prohibited by that that price and also the footprint of a giant console in your entertainment center so uh having just a, a stick that you plug in like a, a roku or something like that would be amazing for them it would it would definitely serve to bring people into gaming that i think are just you know locked out of it right now because they don't want to make that extra investment of buying a console and you know do, dealing with all the upkeep of of having you know a console in your entertainment center 
Yeah, so uh, WVR uh, X Man in the comments said, uh, agrees. They think they're going to sell boatloads of these uh, these game sticks when they come out. Uh, and Mr. Tim Tam in the IGN comments, who may or may not be Ben, uh, you know, shout out to Tim Tams. We love Tim Tams. That's an Australia <laughs> joke for those of you. I know. It's <laughs> um, Mr. Tim Tam said, "Everybody is battling in 2020, and Microsoft is already preparing its arsenal for a battle that'll happen in 2030." Which I think I think is a, a fair sentiment, as much as like we don't want to flame the console wars i do think this is a very forward thinking approach uh you know obviously taking uh the the idea that stadia brought to the table but uh you know with a coming from a, a company like microsoft that already has this backdrop and back catalog of, of games and game pass and infrastructure that people are using i think it's really smart i'm not gonna lie i like didn't jump on the amazon fire tv stick train for a while i was like i don't see the point and then i got one i was like this is the best i use it for everything and now i have one in every room in my house so i can totally <laughs> see myself uh going going down this path and it potentially being a more uh, cost efficient you know solution to gaming as consoles become uh, more complicated and yeah expensive. and these and these streaming services are really shaping up this will be the future like obviously we have stadia now and now uh, amazon luna was announced not too long ago and so now with xbox entering the fray or presenting itself as to be you know one of these services as well i'm i wouldn't be surprised if we see playstation have its own streaming stick bar ball, whatever they, whatever shape it takes yeah. uh, in the, in the next few years or even sooner. And again, on the Tim Tam front, you're going to want the double coat <laughs> chocolate one. They are the best. If you don't know what it is, Google Tim Tam's double coat chocolate. And, and freezing them too, I feel like is the secret. They actually sell some that you should put in the freezer or refrigerator to keep your Tim Tams cool. We can make this a whole Tim Tam section that we did not expect, but Tim Tams, <laughs> uh, delicious. This segment has been uh, brought to you by our love of Tim Tams. Um, I also will shout out uh, Paul Mall in the comments uh, who had said, been on board with Xbox since day one. So great to see them demonstrating their commitment to gaming. Good times ahead. Uh, good times indeed. Uh, we see you folks in the YouTube comments asking, when can we see more of i'm assuming not just the ps5 but the uh the xbox right. series x we'll show you there the box go. again come well, on we can't tell you specific dates we can guarantee that you will see more of both of these consoles from ign sometime between now and november 10th and 12th so uh stick around the next couple of weeks the wait the wait will not be much longer um we are going to jump over to some entertainment focused stories from here but still in the spirit of streaming uh, another big news story of the day uh, relates to mine hunter uh the david fincher series at netflix uh, bad news for you fans out there uh, of the show because david fincher has shot down pretty much every hope that they're going to bring the show back for a season three um this honestly isn't too much of a surprise because we did hear back in January that cast members were released from their contracts at Netflix. Uh, but when David Fincher was asked by Vulture while he was promoting his his new show, Mank, Mank sorry, uh, if, if Mindhunter is going to be done, he replied, quote, I think probably. And he expanded on that saying, listen, for the viewership that Mindhunter had, it was an expensive show. We talked about finish Mank and then see how you feel. But I honestly don't think that we're going to be able to do uh, it Mindhunter for less than he uh, had to spend on season two. He said, and on some level, you have to be realistic about the dollars having to equal eyeballs, basically meaning that it's such an expensive show and the viewers just weren't there. And that feels like very, very much a producer speaking, but he's saying it didn't justify coming back for season three. But it wasn't just money that sounds like it was a factor. He also said that making season two was a really grueling experience for him. His quote said, it's a 90 hour work week. It absorbs everything in your life. When I got done, I was pretty exhausted. And I said, I don't know if I have it in me to, to break season three. And it sounds like even though that was a while ago, he's still uh, feeling about the same. Now, you know, I know uh, Ben and, and Mitchell talking to you guys before this, uh, you, neither of you have I've watched a lot of Mindhunter. This isn't a show that you're obsessed with. So I am gonna go to the YouTube comments in a second ask you guys if you're bummed about Mindhunter not coming back. But what I will ask you is a more general question and something that <laughs> Mr. Craft Pants in the uh, IGN comments, yes, that is the <laughs> username, and I didn't bleep it out. There you go, Mr. Craft Pants. Um, they lamented that this... Uh, cancellation of Mindhunter or it just not returning for more than two seasons is something that's a little bit of a frustration that they're having with Netflix. And I'll read you their comment now. Um, they said, I'd already canceled my Netflix last month and I have zero interest in ever signing back up. I had Netflix since it first launched on the Xbox 360 in 2007 or 2008. 
Bottom line, I refuse to get into amazing shows like Mindhunter, get involved, and then have them canceled out of the blue. This is the fourth time that has happened to me now for Netflix, and I just refuse to do it anymore. Hulu has my money now. So I guess my question for you guys is, do you feel like, are you frustrated that Netflix is only giving these shows one or two seasons now? Uh, or do you kind of, you know, like the the variety of programming that they have that even if they don't necessarily re renew these shows for six or seven or eight seasons, you're still interested in going along for the journey? I mean, for me, it, it's kind of always been the problem with with TV related content, even even with, uh, you know, stuff that airs on cable, like that was one of that's one of my reasons why I, I find it so hard to get invested in a new show because you know it could be a firefly situation where you know I, I get invested and then all of a sudden they rip it away from me and I just have the movie to fall back on uh, but yeah they, I don't think this situation is is unique to, to Netflix uh, that said you know there are some some brutal ones that happened recently like the the Dark Crystal being canceled. That hit me love really hard show. because, yeah, I love that show. Um, but, yeah, it, it's just the nature of of serialized TV, I guess. Um, you know, there's all these pilots that get made. If the pilots don't do good enough, then they don't invest in the series. TV is, is very expensive to make. It sucks, though. Uh, but I, I totally understand, uh, you know, the frustrations about it. Yeah, Ben, I'm, I'm curious if you feel the same way. Yeah, and I, I guess, you know, exactly what Mitch was saying. It's not a Netflix exclusive issue that all these services will face the same problem of, you know, they're trying to produce all these new interesting shows that are going to grab your attention. And if it's not pulling those numbers, obviously we're going to see them being cancelled. And we we don't get the same kind of pilot stuff as we were with just cable television. You're not getting one or two episodes and then, then they decide if they want to continue and buy out the rest of the season. We're getting full, at least we're getting a season or we're getting a, a a large enough chunk of the story that it could exist theoretically on its own. Not everything can be stranger things going, you know, for five seasons, maybe even beyond. Um, so I definitely understand, you know, these, I, I would say I'd describe Mindhunter as more of a, a niche program. You know, it's not as broad. You're not going to get a huge swath of uh, people. I guess you can, you can really get that passionate crowd. Um, but in the end, if you, if you don't have the entire, niche watching it the production w budget will end up killing the show yeah netflix is kind of in a unique scenario because as you guys are pointing out like the pilot approach to more broadcast television was this idea that uh there could be a concept that people are interested in that a studio a studio is interested in pursuing but you would make this pilot as basically a proof of concept and then if they enjoyed the pilot they would pick it up to series then with the rise of streaming we started seeing more of these like uh, full series orders up front and Netflix especially like tends to do like we will pay for your full series on the concept and so season one essentially is the pilot it's a good thing because it gives a show an opportunity to find its footing but also it's a bit of a, a bigger investment and what we've started to see especially with these more expensive shows in recent years is that Netflix will pay the money to, you know, make season one up front, but then while season one is being made, they'll actually have the writer's room already working on season two before there's a renewal. And sometimes if they do see good response in season one, they'll have season two shooting right at the same time. And then what you'll have is this two seasons, these two seasons of a show that are already shot potentially, but say that viewership doesn't maintain or season two really flops. That's when you have that like second season cutoff. And Netflix didn't used to cancel their shows that easily uh, mm -hmm. up until recently, really. And it's because if you think about it, they they had a back catalog of content that was largely licensed content that they were getting from other places that wasn't owned by Netflix or on their platform. Now they have a bigger group of their own uh, content to lean on, and it, they are getting a bit more stingy about like what they're going to keep around uh and even shows are being canceled after one season that like a couple years ago was uh unheard of so mm -hmm. i know a, a lot of folks within ign were very sad about mindhunter uh i see galactic donut uh 728 in the comments said they love uh mindhunter and shame it won't be back but i will say i'm kind of on the the other end of the spectrum um from mr uh Craft pants where uh i i 
in, I find myself just defaulting to Netflix at the end of the day. It's the first thing I put on. And I assume that like, if I can't find something on Netflix that I want to watch, then I'm like really desperate or have been in my house too long this year and watched too many shows, which definitely is the case. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I kind of understand where they're coming from in the cancellations, but it does make you less likely to like jump on board a show right when it debuts if you know it might not stick around for a while versus like waiting for something to accrue more of a buzz and more seasons that you can sit down and have a longer binge with that wasn't supposed to be as long of a rant as it was but like <laughs> stuff uh norbit dre in the comments said i liked mine hunter season one but didn't really didn't i think they mean to say but didn't really care for season two but they they wrote did really care for season two so either they did or they didn't but i think either way they're bummed that it's not coming back <laughs> um and i will also say for those of you who liked mind hunter and are bummed it's not returning check out ozark if you haven't already on netflix it's quite good and ozark is great is yeah. is very great and laura linney as well great show great show um any more thoughts on the netflix front before we go on to our next uh story i no, i, I feel bad I feel bad because in college I made a, a choice whether to follow TV or anime and I followed anime. And so whenever there's a, a TV show that people are talking about, there's, it, there's a chance I haven't watched it. <laughs> we'll talk about Hunter x Hunter next time. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's do that. Was that a good, was that a good yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You got me there. Don't worry. Netflix has, Netflix has anime too. We got one. <laughs> uh, okay. So our next story is all about the Snyder cut. If you thought that the Jared Leto Joker in the Snyder cut news is going to be the biggest Snyder cut news of the week, you would be right. But there is more big news we're going to talk about right now. Uh, so not only is Jared Leto returning, but we also found out today that Joe Manganiello will be reportedly returning as the Deathstroke. So a source confirmed to Collider that Joe Manganiello will be taking part of the current round of reshoots for the Snyder Cut being finished for HBO Max, meaning he, Zack Snyder is not simply reusing existing footage. He actually is going to be shooting new scenes with Manganiello as Deathstroke separate from the theatrical cut. Uh, if you stuck through the credits of the uh, the theatrically released version of Justice League, you'll remember, spoilers, uh, that Manganiello's Deathstroke originally appeared in a post credit sequence, and there he was recruited by Jesse Eisenberg's Le Lex Luthor to join the Injustice League, a, a big uh, super villain group from the comics. Uh, comics. So IGN's Jesse Shadeen previously had speculated that Zack Snyder may be expanding on the idea of the Injustice League and that teaser scene at the end of the Justice League theatrical movie in his version of the Snyder Cut. And that could be why he is deciding to add Jared Leto's Joker into his version of Justice League as he wasn't originally in the Justice League movie at all. And this casting news obviously may further lend credibility to that theory. Um, this also could be a good opportunity for Warner Brothers to like retest the water around Joe Manganiello's Deathstroke because it did get people really excited at the time, but it has been a minute since we've uh, seen that version of the character. Last we heard, the Rave Redemption's uh, director Gareth Evans is also rumored to be directing a solo standalone Deathstroke movie. So this could, again, be a good uh, way to revive interest in that project. Uh, now, the Snyder Cut, oh, the Snyder Cut. The Snyder Cut is a, a movie that was a myth for many years, but that fans clung to and were so passionate about and that Zack Snyder and the cast involved with uh, the Justice League kept bringing up and fueling the flames for that HBO Max did green light that the Snyder Cut would be released at some point in 2021. They would fund uh, Zack Snyder being able to finish this movie. And it's actually not really a movie anymore, but a four part limited series that will be uh, debuted next year. Um, but I mean, it has called into question, like, what is this movie shaping up to be with all these additions, all these reshoots, the a ballooning budget that's reportedly about $70 million, which is like the cost of a normal movie. Um, so I'm curious, what do you guys think? Like, are you excited about the idea of Joe Manganiello's Deathstroke or, or Jared Leto's Joker or the Injustice League appearing in this movie? We'll, we'll start with you, Ben. Um, uh, I was going to lead off what you said. It's just like, what is this production? We This was purely, this was coming back. It was going to be a, just, we have the cut. We're going to add some special effects and we're going to release it. We're going to figure out how it's going to be released. And that's not what we're going to get. We hear about all these reshoots and all these characters coming back. This feels like they're leading into something like 
we're going to build something that you're going to want to continue after the Snyder Cut is aired. They are positioning all of these characters to have their own little offshoot, do their own little thing. I um, I mean, I got to hand it to the fans a little bit on this. If you wanted it, you're getting a lot for what you put in. I, I, I'm very excited specifically to see Joe uh, Manganiello's Deathstroke. I think that was a really great cameo because um, I think looking at the DC world, I do want to see more of these characters embraced. We get a lot of Marvel characters, which I also love. I'm, I don't have, I, I don't favor either one. So nobody flame me in the comments. Um, it's so, but I'm excited that they are embracing maybe lesser known uh, characters and bringing them in in justice league. Yes, please. Uh, but are we going to see Zack Snyder directing, you know, future DC movies in the future? I guess he's kind of doing it now. He's just breaking all the rules. There is nothing I've ever heard that is like what we're going to get with a Snyder cut. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, if you guys remember, like when Man of Steel came out, Zack Snyder was kind of positioned to be the Kevin Feige of the DC, uh, you know, movies. But after the response to Batman vs Superman, and then all the issues with Justice League that did ultimately uh, lead to him leaving before completing the movie, that path kind of didn't end up happening. And and Warner Brothers has been rethinking what those movies are a lot. But if you do remember, originally there was supposed to be a Justice League Part One and Part Two. We never got to the part two, <laughs> but maybe there's going to be a Snyder cut season two that we get. We finally get to see that come to life. Um, Mitchell, have you been have you been following these movies? Are you like intrigued by this kind of return to Zack Snyder's original vision uh, for Justice League and beyond? I'm going to be completely honest. Whenever I see anything Snyder cut related cross by my my feed on Twitter. I just I just scroll on by. <laughs> I I was not I was not a fan of you know I I didn't watch Justice League. I shouldn't say I wasn't a fan. I didn't watch Justice League. I heard it was, I heard it wasn't great. Uh I I had not really been following the the DC movies prior to that. Uh so my my main knowledge of of the Snyder cut was that just that it was something that Greg Miller really wanted to, to see happen. Uh <laughs> And so, like hearing you talk about all this, all this and explain it, it I, I'm like just getting this image of like Frankenstein's monster just being created with all these different parts. And I'm like, what? What is this movie? Wasn't it already something that was done? And and I guess my question that I pose to to you guys is, what what do you think is the reason for all these new additions to to the Snyder Cut? Is it because they they feel like they couldn't make a cohesive movie out of it. Is it because of COVID? Is it because they feel like they need more hype surrounding it? I'm just, I'm so out of the loop on the Snyder Cut. <laughs> well, it's a dangerous thing to say, but I feel like it's the, the we can all accept that it's the truth, which, um, you know, for years we heard about the Snyder Cut and people kept saying it's a myth. It's not done. It's not like there is a finished movie in a vault somewhere that Zack Snyder can just release that is not being released. Uh, and fans were adamant that that was not the case. Uh, it has become very evident it is. The Zack Snyder version of Justice League is an idea, but it is not a finished movie. And I I think as we hear all these different layers of additions to it, that becomes more evident. But I will say, like, is this an opportunity for redemption for this idea? Like, that we did hear reported problems at the time with what that movie was shaping up to be. So is Zack Snyder changing his mind a bit? And, like fixing some of the issues that that might have been evident in that previous version with these new additions, potentially. Um, is this a chance for redemption for these other characters or versions of characters that people didn't, I'm generalizing, but I would say people didn't care for. Like, I don't think Jared Leto's Joker was necessarily beloved by the vast uh, community. Um, I think that's so it's fair. interesting that, that they're bringing <laughs> him back in some way. And I think COVID may have a part of it. Like, it's not like Warner Brothers is able to go out and make a bunch of the movies or TV shows that they were planning to make for HBO Max. So why not invest a lot of money in this, like, hugely hyped uh, project that there is, there are enough fans out there who made enough of a loud clamor that Warner Brothers is spending tens of millions of dollars to 
finish this high profile project. So I think the fact that it may be their biggest release on platform in 2021, because they have been slowed down in their cadence of like making these other, even DC related projects like the Gotham PD um, spinoff TV show of the Batman, Matt Reeves Batman that they're making and they're making a Green Lantern show. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think all those things uh, lead to it. Um, I will say like, you're talking, you're talking about it sounding like a Frankenstein monster. I, I recently revisited the uh, Joss Whedon finished cut of Justice League, which I had not seen since it had come out. And at the time, like we were coming off Suicide Squad, which I don't care if I get crap for this. I hated that movie. I'm convinced that I could have edited a better version of that movie in iMovie <laughs> than what I saw on screen. Like it had a lot of problems. And even David Ayer will say the theatrical release did. Um, so again, when I saw Justice League, I was like, it was fine. It was inoffensive. It was not amazing, but I didn't hate it. When I revisited it, it did feel like a Frankenstein monster. It mm. did feel like you could tell the scenes that were the Joss Whedon scenes. Like it already was reshot and taped together. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I'm like, you know what? It's been so long. We've heard about it so much. Let's let's see the Snyder Cut and like, let's see what it is. And maybe it's great. And you know what? Awesome. Like, <laughs> great. Good for all of us if it is. Um, uh, yeah, yeah finger, fingers crossed fingers that crossed. it is everything that the fans want. And I, yeah, with uh, with when Leto came back, um, when it was announced that he would be uh, reprising his role early in the week, I thought, like you said, like it was going to be this kind of redemption, this kind of agreement above uh, with all the DC people that, OK, we've got this chance. Uh, let's let's give the fans something that they can appreciate. But then when you add Joe Manganiello into the fact, I'm like, he didn't need redemption. No, they're pitching. <laughs> they're pitching beyond what Snyder Cut is. They're looking at the future now and seeing how this can be. That I mean, that we can only speculate. That's what I think. Yeah, it was Chef's Kiss casting too. Like he looked so great. Right. You guys should go. You all go and look at like that Joe Manganiello Deathstroke look that they had in the cameo. He looked awesome. So like, and I love Joe Manganiello. He's a great actor, and and uh, I've always enjoyed his projects and his love of D and D. So uh, more <laughs> Joe Manganiello for for everything. Um, looking at the YouTube comments, uh, Swordman City says, uh, Snyder have a PS5? Cool. Uh, and Fazo says, I just want to see the box one more time, please. So I think right. we, never, we never got past This is the why PS5. I'm here. <laughs> no, I, I will. There we go. Truth Bite says, "Oh, we're just yelling about Sony and and X and Microsoft in the comments. I guess we shouldn't have been surprised. Look at this beautiful box, you guys, and all these great stories. UK Gamer says, you kids can't even lift up the PS5. It will crush yeah. you. Well, Mitchell's proving you wrong right now, UK it, Gamer. 8K. It's 8K. See that? Wow, look at all those Ks. <laughs> uh, and then Daniel DM says, LMAO, PS5, please, please. Well, you're welcome. We just made your, your dreams come true. All right, you guys can keep uh, sounding off about this and that. Uh, going off between PS5 and Xbox, but we have another good versus match for you if you will deign to be uh, distracted by Halloween movie madness in our last story of the day, which kind of isn't a story, but I you know, I wanted to have some fun with, with my best buds, Ben and Mitchell, before we said Aww. goodbye to, to this week and to the weekend and let Mitchell play his darn PS5 all weekend long. Um, <laughs> anyway, our last story of the day is actually a shout out to the IGN Instagram account where we have launched a fun mm -hmm. new uh, versus stories edition that we're calling This or That, where we ask you, the people who follow us, hopefully on Instagram, to pick which of these two things uh, you like better. So this week's theme was not Xbox versus Sony. It was instead yeah. horror movie character matchups and we have the results in each round about 200,000 people voted in each of these face off which is a crazy number but very exciting so I'm going to run down this list uh, and I want to hear from not only Ben and Mitchell uh, but those of you in the comments who don't want to keep talking about Sony and, uh, and Xbox which of these two things you would pick and then I'll let you know what our fans thought of these two matchups does this sound fun? Perfect Yeah now, I to under, understand this, this and that, there is no, like, necessary criteria. It's just what we prefer. <laughs> Not yes, even who's exactly. scarier. It's just who we like better. I believe it's very scientific. There's right. a lot of data that goes into having to make these decisions. My criteria <laughs> is who would win in a fight. Okay. 
Um, again, people are still going back at, at PlayStation versus uh, Xbox, but maybe they'll I'm not, not showing the box again with us. Yeah, <laughs> no more. <laughs> no more box. Um, okay, so again, we the premise is this or that. We want to pick uh, what your what your pick is. Mitchell will have your response first, then Ben, and then I'll look and see if anyone says in the comments, and then I'll reveal what the fans ultimately voted in each of these face-offs. Um, so the first one is Freddy versus Jason. Mitchell, who Ooh, do you pick? Classic. Uh, this is actually a battle of a Mortal Kombat 9 guest character versus a <laughs> Mortal Kombat X guest, char guest character. And I am a much bigger fan of Jason in Mortal Kombat X than I am of Freddy Krueger in Mortal Kombat 9. So definitely Jason takes it. All right. Ben, what about you? It's Freddy. It has to be Freddy. I mean... You you might say who would win in a fight? Who would I rather hang out with? And honestly, I think I'd, I'd, <laughs> I'd rather I think I'd rather have a conversation at least with Freddie. Okay, all right. So we have Norbit Dre says Jason, J Stebon Seven says Freddie all the way. Jordan says Jason all the way. Starecrow says Freddie all the way. Uh, we have <laughs> I think it's a pretty even divide. Uh, and then. <laughs> XX Delfro XX says, imagine saying Jason. Well, Delfro, imagine that, hold on, I'm revealing the results. Jason won this poll of 20 or 200,000 people voting. Jason got 70, 67% of the votes. Yeah. So yeah. Jason stands, stand up. I win. You won. <laughs> you won. You get a prize. You get a PlayStation 5. Congrats. All right. Ah, the next no <laughs> oh. the the next face-off uh, between two, another classic, Alien versus Predator. Mitchell, who you pick? It's Ooh, probably another, like, game a in. battle of Mortal Kombat <laughs> X characters. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, Alien versus Predator, Predator right? Uh, well, Xenomorph was was top tier in Mortal Kombat X. Uh, one of my favorite characters to play as, for sure. Well, his predator was kind of like a trap-based character, not really my game style. So I'm definitely gonna go with the, with uh, the xenomorph on this one. Okay. All right, Ben. How about you? Yeah, I, I mean, this is definitely a tougher battle. I mean, very iconic. I would say predator though, to keep it quick. Okay. All right. Uh, we have uh, again easily easy divides between these. Uh, PlayStation King of Kings with two controller emojis on their name says predator. Mark Stevens says Stevenson says alien. And Chaden, oh, I lost, I lost his name. Chaden said predator easily. Um, I'm getting a lot more predators in the comments. Jay Stevon Seven says predator is badass. Staircrow says predator all the way. Alan Tran still says imagine saying Freddy. Well, all you predator <laughs> fans, uh, predator did win this one, but it was a bit closer. Predator got. 55% of those 200,000 votes. Uh, and then Alien got 45%. I'm a per I, I love the Alien franchise. So I think even though the, the Predator would, you know, it's terrifying. I, I think I just like the Alien franchise a bit better. Um, all right, our next matchup, we're just going to do a couple more of these because they are very fun. Uh, Pennywise versus Jigsaw. Oh, dang, they're Jigsaw. not Mortal Kombat characters. They aren't. <laughs> imagine if they were. Uh, imagine if they were. Uh, you know, I haven't seen I haven't seen either of these movies. So uh, just going by how much like night nightmare fuel they they provide, I'm gonna go with uh, Pennywise. All right, how about you, Ben? Yeah, it's it's Pennywise. It's Pennywise. Lots of Pennywise in the comments as well. Though Jigsaw is getting his shout out to Jordan, saying Pennywise is the undisputed champ. Jordan, you are right. Pennywise won with sixty percent of the votes. Um, I'm going to jump ahead to my favorite one. I hope you guys have seen these movies because they are great. Uh, but in the matchup between Black Phillip and the Babadook, Black Phillip, the black goat from The Witch, or Vivitch, of course. Uh, who do you choose? Mitchell, have you seen these movies? I feel like, I feel like I, you're not... You guys are exposing me right now as someone who doesn't watch anything that we talk about at, at, on News Games and more. <laughs> no, I haven't, I haven't seen any of these movies. Just say Black Phillip because he's my favorite. and I'm Black Phillip for, for reasons. For reasons. How about you, Ben? I hadn't seen The Vivitch, but I have seen the pictures that the comparison, and I will take a goat every time. <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> Prodigy is saying, what is she talking about? <laughs> I'm saying, the who? You guys. Okay, Norbit Dre is saying goat, but I don't know if they understand, if they know Black Phillip or not. Um, you guys should go and watch the Babadook 
a great horror movie from Australia, and The Witch, another great horror movie. Uh, and let us know what you think eventually, or just watch them because they're two of my favorite recent horror movies. And this one, The Babadook did win with 66% of the, the votes. But if you guys watch The Witch, Black Phillip is GOAT. Uh, I love him. I'm obsessed with that movie. Um, okay, my 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 last. Okay, someone someone's recognizing the Baba Duke, and Michael Smith is saying Black Philip was creepy. Thank you for the redemption here. Um, I'm gonna do uh, one more for you guys. Probably the trickiest one of all of these. Again, we're just being goofy because it's Friday and it's the weekend after this. Uh, but in the matchup between Michael Myers, the terrifying villain of the Halloween series, and Mike Myers, the actor you best know might best know for playing Austin Powers, who would you pick, Mitchell, Michael Myers, or Mike Myers? So is Michael Myers the one who married an axe murderer, or was he the axe murderer? He's yeah, he's he's he the, married he's the axe murderer. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, he yeah. maybe he can you know get some help and and axe murder Michael Myers. So I'm gonna go or I'm gonna go with Mike Myers there. Mike Myers, the comedian. Got yeah. it. Ben, yep. how about you? All right, let's get serious. This is a serious matchup. And the criteria was uh-huh. horror movie characters. I did say that who would I rather hang out with? Probably Mike Myers. However, I also don't like hanging out with people funnier than me. So Michael Myers. <laughs> Everyone in the comments is like, what are you guys drinking? Like, what is happening? <laughs> Why, what is the stream? I thought it was about PlayStation 5. Um, you guys who were saying, yeah, his, his movie. Oh, his, Hat Down Low says Mike Myers' his movie, uh, movies are scary bad. Good burn mm. on Mike Myers. We won't let him know you said that. I will say... People went with you, Michael Myers. This was a horror movie uh, criteria. Michael Myers, the the Halloween villain, won with seventy percent of the votes. Uh, but this is the kind of fun you can find every week on IGN's Instagram page. If you want to do these fun matchups, I promise they are fun. Uh, we won't we won't make you go through them here with us, but you can do them yourself. Uh, we're doing those. I think every Friday is the plan, right, Ben? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Check out I can't, we're doing now. Uh, check out IGN's Instagram. Uh, next week is going to be Halloween candy, but don't worry, we will be doing some next gen this or that in the future. So uh, you can get your tap and finger out and let us know what you think. Um, well, thank you, everyone. That was our show for the day. This was very fun, uh, Mitchell. I'm incredibly jealous. Uh, ben and I are going to hop in our cars and come to your house after this and Whoa. steal your PlayStation Five. So um, there will be no evidence of that. Obviously, no one will know that that's what we're doing. It's just a box, guys. It, there's nothing in it. There's Darn it's it. just prove just it. Open it. Open it. <laughs> Open the box. I can't, I, it in the I can't show you the inside of the box. Uh, as as I did say, I know we can only show you the box today, but we do have the PlayStation Five. Uh, you will be getting so much more PlayStation Five and next gen content from us in the coming weeks. And of course, once the consoles come out, we will have. The, loads of coverage not only of the consoles but the games that are being released for them so we ask that you stick around and hopefully you'll enjoy everything we are creating for you um but beyond that thank you so much ben mitchell everyone in the comments who was hanging out with us today that's our news games and more for friday and we will see you again on monday have a great weekend everyone bye bye bye